Rebecca Sklut, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks Embark on a remarkable journey through the dramatic life of Henrietta Lacks and her immortal cells in Rebecca Sklut's book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. By delving into this captivating story, you'll learn about Henrietta's life, her battle with cervical cancer, and how her extracted cancer cells became the crucial turning point in medical research. The book also touches upon the ethical issues surrounding tissue research, patient consent, and the commercialization of human cells. Join us as we explore the monumental discoveries and controversial practices that surrounded the life of Henrietta Lacks, and her priceless contribution to the world of science and medicine. Henrietta Lacks, A Medical Revolution Henrietta Lacks, a young girl from Roanoke, Virginia, changed medical science forever. After discovering a lump on her cervix, she was diagnosed with epidermoid carcinoma of the cervix, stage I. Johns Hopkins used highly intensive radium treatments on her, leading to her death in October 1951. Though Henrietta's treatment was unsuccessful, her cells were taken without her knowledge or consent and used for medical research, leading to countless medical breakthroughs. The Birth of Immortal Cells In the 1950s, George Guy invented the roller tube culturing technique to keep human cells alive outside the body. His most significant invention led to the growth of the first immortal human cell, Hella cells. With the cell's aggressive nature, they spread quickly, doubling every 24 hours, aiding research on polio and cancer that would help in curing these diseases. In the early 1950s, Doctors and scientists struggled to keep human cells alive outside the body to conduct research on illnesses like cancer, polio, herpes, and influenza. George Guy, head of tissue culture research at Johns Hopkins, invented the roller tube culturing technique, a cylinder that rotated slowly, accommodating test tubes. His tireless search for a way to keep cell cultures alive outside the body led him to his most significant invention. The rotation mimicked the motion created by the fluids around the human body, necessary for cell survival, favoring the Hela cell's growth. Henrietta's cancer cells named Hela were the first immortal human cells to survive the technique, doubling every 24 hours faster than the cells in Henrietta's body. Their aggressive nature assisted in the extensive distribution of Hela cells into multiple test tubes, aiding research on polio and cancer that would help in curing these diseases. Guy's and Kubitschek's abilities to see beyond the impossible led to the birth of immortal cells. The Hella Revolution After Henrietta Lacks' death in 1951, her cancer cells were mass-produced in a project aimed at finding a cure for polio. The Hella cells were a viable option for research as they were cost-effective, able to survive in a culture medium, and highly susceptible to the polio virus. The Hella Distribution Center was established, which facilitated the growth and distribution of the cells for research labs and soon evolved into a lucrative institution exploring various illnesses. The Forgotten Source of a Medical Miracle The spread and importance of the Hella cells were unprecedented, yet their source was largely forgotten. When the author stumbled upon articles presented at a medical conference, she contacted Roland Patillo, the conference organizer and Henrietta's family friend. Despite the family's reluctance to discuss Henrietta or her cells, the author persisted and eventually traveled to Henrietta's hometown to locate distant relatives. The family's mistrust stemmed from the belief that the doctors had taken Henrietta's cells without her permission, along with the history of exploiting black Americans in medical studies like the Tuskegee syphilis experiments. Sadly, the author was stood up by Henrietta's immediate family, but the journey shed light on the forgotten source of a medical miracle. The Mysterious Disappearance of Henrietta Lacks After Henrietta Lacks' death, her family faced financial struggles. Her children questioned their father about their mother's death but were discouraged from asking further. Decades later, Henrietta's daughter, Deborah, demanded to know about her mother's identity and demise. The author traveled to Henrietta's hometown and talked to her distant relatives and doctors, leading to a closer relationship with the family. Through her research, the family also discovered more about Henrietta's medical contribution. 
However, some family members remained reluctant to talk about the Hella case and its impact. Confronting Distrust in the Medical Industry The book discusses the historical tensions and myths surrounding the relationship between black people and the medical industry. Despite documented cases of exploitation of black people by scientists, many stories circulating within the black community were fictional, such as the case of night doctors. However, medical experiments had indeed been conducted on slaves to test new surgical techniques. With hospitals and research centers offering money for bodies, black people's distrust of the medical field intensified, especially since many were unable to afford medical care. Johns Hopkins, located near a poor black area, contributed to local black people's suspicion of the school. The tension between black people and the medical industry drove Henrietta's family's suspicion of doctors, researchers, and anyone else interested in Henrietta and her cells. The myth of night doctors obscured Johns Hopkins' mission to provide medical care for all. Hella Cells, a medical marvel and a catastrophe. Hella cells are the first immortal human cells, have been the basis for some of the most important medical discoveries in history, and were distributed around the world in the hope of finding cures for various diseases. However, a major problem with the research was revealed in 1966 when geneticist Stanley Gartler discovered that Hella cells had contaminated all the cultures they had been near. Scientists knew that cell cultures could contaminate one another, but they did not know exactly what Hella was capable of. Hella cells could survive in the air attached to dust particles, pass from unwashed hands and pipettes to other cultures, reproduce quickly, and contaminate other cell cultures. Gardler's revelation invalidated much of the research conducted on what scientists had assumed to be different cell cultures. While most doctors continued to work with the cultures, a few took Gartler's findings seriously and needed to find a way to identify the presence of Hella, which led them to Henrietta's family. Hella cells remain an essential tool in medical research, but the contamination revealed their effect on the progress of science. The Connection Between Hella Cells and the Lax Family The book describes how doctors tried to locate Henrietta Lacks' surviving family members to obtain blood samples, hoping to continue their research on the widespread contamination of Hella cells and develop a way to map the human genome. The Lacks family was located, and samples were taken from Lawrence, Sonny, Deborah, and Joe, Zachariah, who was in prison. However, while the scientists claimed the blood work was for research purposes, De Lax told his children that it was to detect cancer. Deborah's concern regarding her mother's medical history led her to demand information from her father and eventually approach doctors at Johns Hopkins. This led to a discussion between the doctors and Lax family regarding Henrietta. The Controversial History of Cell Lines the book explains how the use of cells from patients for research and health development led to controversies and ethical concerns. The book delves deep into the history of patient cells being used for research and health development. The Hella cells of Henrietta Lacks were one of the most consequential cases, as her aggressive cancer aided in the development of treatments for other diseases. However, the author argues that situations similar to Henrietta's have happened in the past. In the case of John Moore, a cancer patient, researcher David Gold developed and marketed Moore's cells without disclosing the purpose to Moore. Similarly, Ted Slavin's antibodies for hepatitis B were marketed with his consent and help. Henrietta had passed away, and hence, she never had any rights to her cells. These cases highlight many ethical concerns, especially regarding patients' rights. The book provides an in-depth analysis of how the use of cells from patients for research and health development led to controversies and ethical concerns. Patients have a right to know how their cells are being used, and they should come to consent before any cells are used for research. Overall, the Hella case continues to have far-reaching implications for the future, especially when it comes to patient rights. Bioethics and the Business of Tissue the book explores the legal and ethical implications of isolating, storing, and marketing patient cells without their consent. From Henrietta's case to the current time, these practices have remained legal and are supported by institutions and committees. However, opponents argue that patients have a right to know how their cells will be used, especially in issues involving ethical concerns. 
While consent is required for research purposes, it is not mandatory for storing samples from diagnostic procedures for future studies. The financial aspect of cell commercialization and marketing remains uncertain, and gene patenting raises concerns about ownership and distribution of biological materials. The book highlights the need for federal oversight of tissue research and grants patients more rights to their cells' use. Henrietta Lack's life and her immortal HeLa cells have left an indelible mark on medical research, contributing greatly to the understanding and treatment of various diseases. However, her family's struggle and the ethical dilemmas arising from tissue research and commercialization also serve as a stark reminder of the human side of scientific progress. The immortal life of Henrietta Lacks not only explores these captivating and polarizing themes, but also allows the reader to delve deep into the emotional landscape of the Lacks family and understand the impact of Henrietta's legacy on their lives. By the end of this journey, you'll have a renewed appreciation for the complex interplay between science, ethics, and human relationships, and a greater understanding of the significance of Henrietta Lacks and her immortal cells.